people want to know, um, anyone ever pay you to explore Saudi or like to speak of it or anyone sponsor you or is this all from you know your love for the country and your love for exploration? <laughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to the new Mosho podcast studio. Uh, I've been waiting for this episode for a long time, specifically with the two ladies sitting in front of me. I'd like to introduce Gail Summer and Paris Vare. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Th thanks so much for opening the new studio. Um, it's, uh, it's been a, a long time in the making, but we're finally here, and I'm so happy that you guys grace me with your presence <laughs> in, uh, in the launch. It's an honor, really. Gail, um, uh, you are Paris's mother. Yes. And uh, you moved to Saudi five years ago. Five years ago, what yes. What were you doing before then back in the U.S.? Um, I was teaching. Mm -hmm. I was teaching. Kindergarten as well? Uh, preschool, yes. Preschool. Yeah. And um, how did Saudi come to mind as a place that you wanted to, to move to or live in? Have you ever been to the region, ever visited? Uh? Never. I had never been. Okay. I, had, I had only um, been down south. So... It was new territory, and I really wasn't interested in the Middle East at all. Like, mm -hmm. just no interest at all. Yeah. And because uh, for me, it was a war zone. <laughs> That's what I thought. You so, think, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't blame you. I blame, <laughs> I blame the media. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you um, did it. You, 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 uh, you know, with all the courage in the world, you decided to move to Saudi. The fair comes, and um, I inter ended up interviewing with about 18 different schools that weekend. It was a long weekend, a busy weekend. And uh, when I first arrived at the fair, I had met a lot of other uh, teachers who were interviewing with the Middle East, and they were trying to convince me to at least interview. And I was like, no, no, I am not interested in the Middle East. I want to work down south. And finally, after they had spent some time with me and talked, they kind of talked me into giving it a chance. Yeah. So I gave it a shot, really enjoyed the interviews. And so I started to open myself up to um, the Middle East. Yeah. And um, it came down to three schools or three countries, uh, Nepal and Qatar and then Saudi Arabia. And I had like 48 hours to make a decision. So and so, <laughs> so why Saudi from all those three? I'm, I'm so interested. It's crazy because I woke up uh, one morning and um, I told my roommate, um, I said, I'm going to go to the place that I, uh, that I most fear. And so I was going alone. I sold everything that I owned, got the one-way ticket. Wow. And... Here I am, and you know, a lot of people were <laughs> thinking that I was crazy. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you crazy? You know, and I just kept going with it. And I said, you know what? I can do. I can do it for a year. Like, yeah. what's a year? Yeah. You know, if I don't like it, I'll come back. Yeah. Well, it's five years later, and now I'm like, <laughs> I want to stay forever. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Amazing. How did you feel, Paris, about your mom when she's like, you know what? I'm selling everything and I'm <laughs> moving to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Well, everybody was thinking she was crazy. I was the only other crazy one, I think. <laughs> um, at that point, I had moved on my own by myself to Los Angeles, which was big from where I'm coming, a small town. And I was like, you just need to leave the hometown. Like, you need to leave, Mom. So the only thing I questioned, I was like, is it like, there's no like wars or it's fine, right? And she's like, no, I think it should be good. And I was like, OK, yeah, go. Yeah. Um, and uh, what, what were you doing in, uh, you moved from Chicago to, to L.A., you spent some time there? Yeah. Uh, what were you up to in L.A.? Um, I was there for about four years, and I was going to, going to a university originally, okay. and I fell in love with acting, but where I come from, everybody's like, oh, you'll never make it, don't do it, it's like this dream thing. So negative. So I just, on. yes. <laughs> um, you have a face so for the screen. <laughs> Well, thank she, you. She, she could pass for a Hollywood actress. <laughs> you know, there's something there. <laughs> uh, anyway. So you, so you did I, the acting I, for a bit. Yeah, so I focused on that for a while and got a great agent, was booking stuff and saved that money and then started traveling the world in my free time. Mm -hmm. And that's when, at that point, she had been living in Saudi and she was like, you know, you should work on getting your visa. There was no tourism open, nothing. So I had to wait a long time. She's like, you have to not, pa you can't travel for like a month. You yeah. have to make sure you can give up your passport <laughs> yeah, for this yeah. time. <laughs> and so I did that, got it, and was able to visit her. And how long have you been here now so far? Like two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah. I visited her with plans of just visiting yeah. and fell in love with the country. Wow. And that was even before I was traveling, like exploring the country and the yeah. beauty of it. I had yeah. already fallen in love. Took everything from LA, decided to sell everything and just take some of my clothes and use Saudi as my home base. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like never wanting to leave. I'm <laughs> like. <laughs> so, so I know your mom teaches uh, kindergarten. That's mm -hmm. that's her, uh, you know, uh, 
a, a day job during the week, and then on the weekends you guys do a lot of traveling. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Paris, what do you do during uh, the week, like work-wise? Did you um, join a company here at all, or is it just uh, your freelancing work uh, <laughs> online on social media? What? What, what did I say? Meow, <laughs> meow. <laughs> <laughs> My, my cat addiction has really grown oh, over yeah. quarantine. <laughs> so that's what she's, she's thinking about. She's a cat nanny. <laughs> you, guys, you guys rescued a, a few. I mean, we spoke just before we started shooting. You guys um, rescued a few cats. Yeah, yes. we have six um, rescues. One of them road tripped with us from Jeddah because we couldn't leave her. She oh, God, that's so strange. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, we have a lot of cats. But I am a freelancer, so I, I really like having control of my brand, and I feel like a lot of the other management and places that have reached out to me prior um, just wasn't fitting. Yeah. I like I know Saudi really well, and I know the rest of the world and how I want it to be perceived from my channel. Mm -hmm. So during my normal week, I'm taking care of our rescue cats, of course, <laughs> but I'm freelancing. So I do all of my editing and work all from home, mm -hmm. and that's answering emails and everything like that, and trying to get work, and whether it's in Saudi or around the world, just doing everything social media based, yeah, so I can yeah. work from anywhere. I've forensically gone through your Instagram page and some of the pictures that I've seen about Al Ula, which we'll get to in a minute, have <sighs> been breathtaking, don't honestly. Don't get me started. <laughs> and the fact that you do all the editing, you, d you don't have a team with you editing, shooting, it's all you? No, it's all me. That's amazing. Um, that really is cool. It's I my mean, passion, photography in general and editing, and it really allows me to bring my perspective and how I visualize that yeah, moment yeah. to life, yeah. where that's where I have trouble giving part of my work to somebody else because mm -hmm. I value mm -hmm. my viewpoint so strongly, yeah. especially with Saudi. Yeah, yeah. No, Not I to see be it. misconceived. We all see it. I'm we here to <laughs> show my real love. Um, on the weekends, you guys uh, hit the road. Um, I, I've seen your stories. You uh, you get into your real little red wrangler. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Little red wrangler. <laughs> red little, little, little red wrangler. Desert wrangler. Rose, her name is. <laughs> Desert Rose. Yeah. More than that. And you guys, you guys hit the freeways. You, uh, you, know, you explore mm -hmm. all parts of Saudi. Mm -hmm. Um, any specific region or spot that just jumps off the page that you really think about when you're not there that you miss when you're not there? Um, for me, Wadi Lajab uh, in Jizan mm -hmm. is my favorite place in all of Saudi. Never um, been. What's it like? Uh, it's. I, I didn't really have any expectations when I was going and um, just had seen a few pics on Instagram and when we got there uh, it was just so magnificent. I mean, when you drive into the camp, to the to the area, mm -hmm. Um, there's just these huge canyons and you're like driving through water and then uh, you end up parking and then you go into like you can swim hike climb and we didn't even go that far back and that's what one of the reasons uh, that I want to why I want to go back mm -hmm. is because we didn't feel I we didn't have enough time to go like deep into uh, that area is it like a canyon like a water canyon yes. with just yeah it's like yeah. I, I got to visit. You're not the first yeah. person that tells me about it. It sounds yeah. fascinating. Yeah, it is. And um, so we had so much fun that day, just like jumping off like little cliffs and climbing up huge rocks. And then uh, what was really cool was when we came back in right before sunset, um, the locals were there to welcome us with gawa and dates, conversation, and it just it helped like us up the rocks. Yeah, like. It felt like such a community. Um, it was just such a wonderful day. I was filled with so much joy when I left, and yeah. I was like, I got to go back. I got to go back. Hospitality down south is different. Yeah. These guys, uh, if they manage to get a hold of you, you know, they're, they're not letting you leave until, you know, <laughs> you're well fed. It's true. And it might take a few days, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, uh, it's special there. You know, they're really yeah. taking care of their guests is in their DNA, you yeah. know, more so than any other region in Saudi. That's mm -hmm. known for hospitality. Yeah. yeah. So Wadi Lajab would be your mom's favorite region. What about you, Paris? Is it what we just talked about? Uh, it's so difficult for me to choose one. Each one has its own special place yeah. um, in my heart but I would definitely say I can't not say Alula because mm -hmm. I keep returning and when I'm not there I think about it and I still have so many places I want to go in Alula yeah. um, yeah. it's such a special special place Truly. Um, Truly. also it was like the first place I visited besides like when I came to visit you mm -hmm. that was the first place I ever explored and saw and I was just awestruck because did not know this type of beauty existed in Saudi so yeah. that was like yeah Magical. Yeah, it's really special. When for you me. step off the plane, like you, you feel that it's different here. So different. It's so picture mm. uh, photogenic is the mm. word I was looking for. Super yes. photogenic. Very. You can take a picture of anything, you know, <laughs> and just a few me all day long. Paris <laughs> Paris basic edits <laughs> on anything, and it's uh, you know it's a worthy picture. Yeah. And I love what the government's doing there in terms of spend. They're really investing in that region, um, in, in in that town of Al Ula. 
bunch of hotels are coming up, yeah. attractions. It's half of it is uh, is UNESCO uh, preserved. Um, and, and I actually told someone on a podcast, I think it was episode three or four, I was like, it's not going to be too long before we see direct flights from Europe. Mm-hmm. And I'm calling it right now, from it's Europe to Al Ula. With the plans that I've heard uh, are, are in store for us in Al Ula, mm-hmm. I think it'll be, attraction, it'll be an attraction for those who live in all, you know, Europe, North America, Far East, where they don't have that terrain, that desert terrain yeah. with these old tombs, kind of like Petra, yes. but, you know, but a little mm-hmm. different. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's, it's undiscovered because Saudi only just recently, and when I say recently, I mean two years ago, if that, Crazy. is when they opened up for tourism. Mm-hmm. E-visas for U.S. citizens, you know, it's done in a, in a matter of minutes online. So um, a lot of people now have the opportunity to explore Saudi when they didn't before. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Saudi on a local level here are getting ready for that, investing in infrastructure, mm-hmm. etc. What I think is so special too about Alula is that we've been to Jordan and Petra and we love, love mm-hmm. Jordan and Petra but, um, and Wadi Rum, things like that in Jordan. But Alula is like a more vast, a beautiful, but more vast version mm. of that. So there's so much space, so much room, so much to see yeah, yeah. that even when right now Alula, I would say, is the busiest place in Saudi yeah. because it's the most popular and Definitely. people want to see this place. Yeah. And even when you're there, it doesn't feel like, you know, it feels like you still have it to yourself. Yeah. Even if you do, you there's do. a lot of people. Yeah, you don't rub shoulders with nice. many. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, the rock formations there are so crazy. Because that was the um, the bed of the sea, like a thousand or two thousand years ago. That was all underwater. Mm-hmm. So what you see, you know, when you walk through these rock formations, and yeah. it's like nothing you've ever seen. It's because that was underwater. So, so a fun fact for today. Always <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> learning. Um, people want to know. Um, anyone ever pay you to explore Saudi, or like to speak of it, or anyone sponsor you, or is this all from you know your love for the country and your love for exploration? We have not been paid. This is, I would be a billionaire <laughs> if I was paid by now. Right, right. <laughs> Bring on the money. I'm, I'm sorry for having to have to ask, but I promised a couple of people that I will ask. I think it's super important. Yeah. We get asked it a lot, and I think it's a big misconception about us sharing Saudis. So they're like, oh, they're just being paid. Yeah. And I'm like, but that's what makes it so special is that we're not getting not. paid, and we just want to explore, we want to share this beautiful country to people. Yeah. Like Most people need to know about this country. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Most of my posts are from Saudi now and th- none of this is being paid. This is all by me wanting to share. It brings me true joy to share it. And Amazing. Mm-hmm. I love hearing that. The fact that you get into your little red Wrangler <laughs> and you drive from the eastern province to Najran, which is, I want to say a thousand kilometers, 15 hour drive. That's real commitment, and if you're not in love with what you do, you wouldn't be doing that. You know, <laughs> you right. probably you probably fly if you're being paid. Yes. Um, it's it's a daunting task, especially you know with uh, how how the driving is. You know, on the freeways, people go super fast here. Some mm-hmm. roads aren't lit, so it's a daunting task to do that. But you guys do that almost effortlessly. I can see it's so in in, in your mm-hmm. hearts. Also, being two women, and when I first arrived, I think it was like two years, or two and a half years ago, mm-hmm. when you could just get a license. So as a woman, it's pretty crazy to people and empowering to be two single women on the road. <laughs> she had just got her license in Saudi Arabia. I it's can't just believe it. Like, I'm seeing it, and I don't believe it. Would you, if the opportunity presented itself and you fell in love, would you consider ever marrying a Saudi, Paris? Yalla, <laughs> Habibi. <laughs> You you would entertain that <laughs> if Mr. Yes. Wright came came along um, and and he's of and he's in Saudi you would uh, you would and and settle here and live here absolutely and mom how do you feel mom about too that? <laughs> mom, mom would take one too <laughs> all, <laughs> all of a sudden I think this is you the bachelor cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut that part out <laughs> not keep it not, not not where I ever thought this podcast would go you know, we'll just tell it like it is just keep it real. all my friends know anyway so it's fine. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> no significant other people in your life at the moment? No, Just no. Just for I'm those single. watching who uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Taking number. applications. <laughs> I was going to say take a number, take an application. <laughs> uh, guys, I'm in awe when I, when, I, when, I, when I see where you guys go and you pinch that, you pitch that tent anywhere you go in front of Elephant Rock. It's amazing because you don't need to have a hotel. Like, you don't need a hotel wherever you go. Mm-hmm. And, and people like me or, you know, normal tourists, they're... They're uh, bound, is that the word? They're bound by Mm -hmm. spending the night in wherever those hotels are. Um, But the fact that you guys are so free that you can pitch the tent wherever you want. I saw the one in front of Elephant Rock. It, um, God, that's so liberating. 
Um, what would you say one of your favorite encounters uh, were in, in some of the regions where you, you know, just decided to spend the night or whatever, people you met? Um, what was one of the most memorable or favorite encounters out there in the wild? Boy, that's hard. It's cause there's so many, really yeah. so many, but uh, surely you can sum up a few that can hopefully explain <laughs> how <laughs> hospitable these people <laughs> are all across the country. I just remember a, an occasion where there was like a, a, a tribes man or a tribes woman, a family, a Bedouins, um, and they saw you two and they rushed to give you their baby and they <laughs> wanted to take pictures. And um, I just, the sight was hilarious. You know, there were, there were, there were so, it was like aliens, you know, yes. <laughs> drop on this guy. It was Did like, you guys get that a lot? It was literally where? just, yes. just straight yeah. directly handed to me. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Hi there. <laughs> Salam. They must have thought you're a Hollywood actress. <laughs> <laughs> <You go from. laughs> That's actually funny you say that because <laughs> in these moments, specifically we're in Wadi Disa for one of these times and they barely speak any English, if any at all. And we speak a little bit of Arabic, so we work some in there. Yeah. But when I say my name is Paris, you know, it, it took them a moment. <laughs> and then, then they were all of a sudden they were like, they don't speak very much English. They were like, wait, Paris Hill, are you Paris Hilton? <laughs> It was like no Arabic, but they know Paris Hilton <laughs> had this moment. Yeah, I mean, I could see where they're coming from, you know. <laughs> Blonde hair, hair, Paris, young. how many Paris's are there? <laughs> exactly. Her birth name, mom, that was her birth name? Uh-huh, that was her birth name. I just liked the name. I just, I always like different names. And so I had it picked out in 1990. Before Paris Hilton was a yeah. thing. <laughs> Before Paris Hilton <laughs> Dis- was a thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Such so, a cool name. Yeah, so I, have a, I had a son and, um, in 1990, and um, I had two names picked out because I didn't know what the sex was going to be. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so I had my son, and then when I got pregnant with her, then, yeah. Yeah, so Paris it is. Did you like on. that name growing up? Growing up, I've always been really shy, so for me, it was like, I didn't have like the normal name yeah. of like Haley or Nicole Kate, or yeah, something, yeah, Katie, yeah. <laughs> so I was super shy. I remember being at soccer practice, like I'd have to say my, what my name was, and everybody would kind of like giggle, and I would be so like, it was, it was hard, <laughs> and then as I grew up, I, I love it. I love having something different. The more different, the, the better. Yeah. I love differences. I love yeah. yeah, so now I appreciate it greatly. Thanks, yeah. Mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice <laughs> Shout out to my mom. <laughs> she knew what she was doing from day one. I guess so. <laughs> um, guys, like, let's not, you know, beat around the bush. Two blonde girls um, circling Saudi, road tripping, going to all these regions. It's, um, it's, it's eye-popping. It's eye-catching. Uh, and you guys must attract a lot of attention wherever you go. Have you ever felt unsafe or vulnerable being a minority in Saudi or just on edge at all? To be completely honest, um, I've traveled to over 50 countries. And out of everywhere in the world that I have been, Saudi Arabia is the safest country to travel to and within as a woman. And this is completely opposite to what you'd think prior. But I could walk around at night with a million dollars on my head and nobody would touch me. And so to answer your question... (laughs) Never, huh? Never No. so as we mentioned, our first road trip, yeah. our first stop was Najran. Mm-hmm. We hadn't known or seen anybody that had been to Najran, and it actually has a travel advisory, being you know only like ten minutes from the border Before of Yemen. Yemen yeah, yeah. Yes. So we just like <laughs> looked up a few places that looked very photogenic, and I was mm-hmm. like, well, let's just stop in. We'll just go. We won't stay the night, and then we'll we'll head to our next spot. So we'll just stop and see. And so we we started to arrive late in the night. Long story short, we ended up sleeping in the car for like two hours, woke up, and then we're like, okay, let's go to the forts, let's just knock this out. And we felt fine when we were there. It was actually really pretty. We're like, wow, the landscape, everything looks so nice. (laughs) Um, When we went to one of the forts, we were taking photos, and a family, a local family, had started talking to my mom and ended up taking photos (laughs) with us, with their kids, (laughs) and then um, invited us for dinner. And so we were like, oh, no, we should probably get going. But then we were like, okay, no, we'll just take a few photos at the other places, and if we have time, we'll stop after. So we got their number, and then after we were finished, we were like, okay, let's just go stop. And then as we started to head to the location they sent us, we were on a dirt road in the middle of nowhere. We were going up to a house that had gates. We couldn't see in it. They were wanting <laughs> us to drive in the gates. And then all of a sudden, we were like, okay, should we like, should we do this? All of a sudden, I'm like, 
I don't know. Like, it's intimidating. It's, yes, I was Send like, send your location to your friends. Yeah, I'm like, wait, is this is this a setup? Like, are we being too naive? Like, we are at the border. Everyone's like, don't go there. As you know, mm-hmm. single woman. And you guys are brave. Honestly, <laughs> I don't know if I would have done that. We try to always trust our gut, and yeah. so even though we had that moment where we're like, okay, let's be safe. But then they opened the gates and this family was dressed in their nicest dresses. The entire family of women, kids, wow. everything dressed in their best outfits, waving, welcome, welcoming us into That's their right. home. Yeah. Yeah. And Najran became one of, uh, one of our favorite stops mm-hmm. on that trip because it was so unexpected and a place that people don't go to because of fear. They let fear drive them. And this is a lot of reasons people don't come to Saudi. They let fear stop yeah. them from coming to yeah. Saudi, yeah. Um, yeah. which is so unfortunate because if we would have let fear drive us, we wouldn't have been able to experience what we did in Najran. Yeah. And so they offered they offered for us to stay the night. Yes. They gave us this huge dinner, oh, even sweet. vegetarian food. Oh, wow. And had also, brought in yeah, also, remember they saved, actually, remember they, okay, we were going to go oh, yeah. up this really, I guess, dangerous road up the coast of Yemen to go to Jazan region. But instead, they recommend going to Abha first and then going to Jazan. So they completely, they're like, oh, no, 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 don't go that way. So they actually, it was like an angel coming down, like, <laughs> let's not start the road trip off. Like, let's go yeah. on a safe route and go this way. It was so just thoughtful. amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So as a whole, Saudi. And then they, I remember they took us to the, they took us to, uh, they wanted to drive with us because they said there's there was a steep hill and they weren't, sh- we mm-hmm. were like a little, straight up. They're no. like, it's straight up. And um, we'll go with you. Like they drove all the way out all with us. All the way, out of the way to, to go up sure with us to make sure we were okay. We were okay. It's this is only there. like a little taste just to understand yeah. the yeah, Saudi yeah, people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they are so into hospitality. I know I touched on it, mm-hmm. but I have to say it again. I mean, um, I can only think of Hail. Uh, a place that you guys oh, have been to yeah. that are o- on that level, you know. Mm-hmm. I think they, you know, they they uh, compete against each other. You know, who's the most hospitable? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> They're on complete but opposite. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm more of a westernized Saudi. You know, I, I went to school in the U- UK. I went to school in the US. Um, so I haven't traveled Saudi much mm-hmm. um, until the last four or five years. Mm-hmm. So I went to Hyde for the first time two years ago. I was shocked that not only are people's gates open, but the front door to their house is open at three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. I saw it. Mm-hmm. And the local guy who was with me, I'm like, how's this normal? Did the guy forget to close it? He's like, no, look at the house <laughs> next door. You know, it's open. Yeah. Um, like a- any problems with, uh, you know, uh, people's houses getting robbed or, or crime or anything like that? He was like, absolutely not. It's not even um, something that is considered. Mm-hmm. Have you seen a police car since you've been here? I'm like, now that you mentioned it, no. Um, and that was like re- really eye-opening to me that uh, people leave their front doors open throughout the night mm-hmm. um, just out of, you know, if, if, if somebody wants to come in for a cup of coffee and dates, please be my guest, yeah. you know? Um, so that's what Saudi was like back in the day. I spoke to some uncles and I'm like, it's different at Hyatt. He's like, Jeddah used to be like that too, but it grew from 100,000 people to 6 million people today. So with 6 million people, you know, they're not all going to be straight shooters. Mm-hmm. Uh, so but there are some regions, Hyatt and, and down south, where it hasn't changed. It's still as primitive as it was, you know, mm-hmm. 50, 500 years ago, so great. which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, are, are you guys done traveling around Saudi? I mean, uh, have you done all the regions or are you still going to get into the little Red Wrangler on the weekends <laughs> and uh, explore uh, new areas or, um, or, 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 or areas that you've already been to? We've done 15,000 kilometers total, 10,000 kilometers yeah. the first trip and then about 5,000 this most recent trip to the, to, uh, in the north, northern part. Mm-hmm. Um, But we definitely want to uh, go back on the road again and kind of explore deeper into some of the areas that we've already been. Uh, We also would love to uh, visit the White Volcanoes in Tabuk Mm -hmm. and the Ferrison Islands as well. Down south. mm -hmm. Yeah. Down south. There's always more more driving. Did you say Empty Quarter as well? I've been to the Empty Quarter, um, but she hasn't, so (laughs) we could maybe do that again sometime. I have like a major (laughs) goal that I want to cross off the list in Saudi, and I want to do like full Bedouin style of going across the whole Empty Quarter by camel. So that's what I I want to do at this point. I can almost (laughs) imagine the pictures, you know, now that you're going to get a photo (laughs) of (laughs) them. You guys are hilarious. Man, I, I've always wanted to do the empty quarter as well. So let me know when you guys go. We'll uh, we'll uh, we'll link up. Okay, Very cool. Um, what put you guys in a good mood generally? If you just had to like you know quick fix to get in a good mood, what really does that for you, Gail? Um, I would say people. Yeah. 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 Being around different people, like different cultures. Yeah, different cultures, diversity for sure. That 
Yeah, that's like everything yeah. to me. There's nothing like understanding new cultures, you know? Mm -hmm. Hearing all the different languages. Yeah. It's so beautiful. It's like oneness. It gives you an opportunity to be more understanding and accepting, you mm -hmm. know, the more people you meet and acknowledge that people have differences. We're not all the same. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, give people a break and understand, you know, why they think that way or why they operate that way. I think we'll be less judgmental the more right. we yes. travel and Absolutely. see new, new cultures. You've done 50 countries? Perhaps? Yes. Mashallah. Something like that. <laughs> Start to lose count. Mashallah. Mashallah. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. Yes. After Saudi, which would be your favorite, I would imagine. What's number two on your list? Um, so I have like kind of a top four-ish, I think. Mm -hmm. It's hard to choose. Um, no particular order because they're special in their own way, but definitely Saudi, Jordan, um, Norway, and Bali. Ooh, Those are nice. always ones that I'll return to again and again, and I really, really love for different reasons. Yeah, yeah. Very diverse. You know, you have your desert terrain, you know, <laughs> yes. your cold area, and your jungle. Yeah. Bali, uh, I, I hear good things. Something so I want to do as well. Yeah. Yeah. Great people also. Yeah. Or would you say something uh, that people get wrong about you? <laughs> um, that I think like living in Saudi and just doing all the traveling that I've been doing recently, uh, some people think that, you know, it was just handed to me, um, that I didn't work for any of it. And it's, it's definitely not the case. I worked very hard I to bet. get here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It took a lot, of, uh, a lot of work, a lot of tears. And um, yeah, so I would say that. What about you, Paris? Do people get anything wrong about you? Um, <laughs> yes, I think one of the biggest misconceptions towards me would be based on my work, and they think that I have an entire team doing this, that I have a photographer, and that I'm just standing in front of somewhere and looking pretty, mm -hmm. and that's it, when actually I'm doing the whole creative direction and the styling, and spending endless, endless hours yeah. finding a unique location that nobody's mm -hmm. been, yeah and shooting it with my own camera that I set up, <laughs> the shot I want, and then she helps me take it I after. Love it. I love it. <laughs> and then I edit and yeah, everything, I do all of my own work yeah. and I spend countless hours doing it. I can it. see, countless. I can see, I can see. <laughs> yes. Some of the pictures, there was a really nice picture, I'll put it up right now, of you in Al Balad, I think it was. You were on a phone with so many things behind you. Uh, that one's in Al Hassa. I was, was it in Al Hassa? Yeah. The, the, the vintage one? museum. The oh vintage my museum. god! Oh, yeah, 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 that that's that, that is cinematic on another <laughs> Thank level. Thank you. I still Honestly. have some more from that place. It's really cool. I think that's my favorite picture uh, wow. on, on your page. It's so oh, safe. Really? Thank yeah. you. No, like you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just so. I'm like, please be taken in Saudi Arabia. Please <laughs> yes. <in> Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. cool. Nothing like working on something that you really enjoy. You don't really feel like it's work. You know, and you it's get that best. with photography. Yeah, this is why I do all of this, whether I'm being paid or not, because mm -hmm. it's my passion. And I never want to lose that passion. So I don't seek doing this, going to do something for yeah. money, no. because I genuinely seek the passion Correct. first and most foremost. She's got a good head on her shoulders, mm -hmm. mom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do or what a you, lot of life too. Yeah. Know, well, well raised. <laughs> do what yeah. you love. And money will come. Yes, mm -hmm. it'll know? follow. But do do what you love. It'll never mm -hmm. feel like work. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so God, just uh, an inspiration to anyone out there. You know, looking uh, at a career change or you know something. Find out what you love, and then see how you can exercise that as your as a career. Mm -hmm. And um, and good things will come when you work Which from the heart. I think that's also why travel in general is super important. Whether that's across your own country, um, just leave your hometown for a while. And I think it's one of the greatest things you could do, it's like the best university you could go to is to experience life and travel somewhere out of your comfort zone. And it makes such a difference in all aspects. You yeah. can find more about yourself and your hobbies. And Changes all I did for this was just, it was just a hobby mm -hmm. and it brought me here. And You know um, what, Gail, if you, didn't take, <laughs> if you didn't take that decision, going back to the first couple of minutes when you said that you chose to come to Saudi based on what you feared the most, if you didn't mm -hmm. take that tough decision, you wouldn't have paid the way for for Paris mm -hmm. being the person she is today, Correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so a decision that you took uh, has changed your life. What I think mm -hmm. is for the better, and and here is Paris. You know, two and a half, two years into Saudi, with uh, you know plans to you know looking for her Habibi here. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most important part about that is that it changed my perspective with the Middle East so much yeah. that now I promote it. Now I just can't stop Sorry. talking Which, about how great it is yeah. and how safe it is and please people come visit. Which like, as a whole has, I think the Middle East, specifically Saudi, is a complete polar opposite of, for example, California. 
I mean, you're coming to a place where we're very free and you could walk around in your bikini yep. down Hollywood <laughs> Boulevard and yeah, nobody yeah, yeah. would even look at yeah, you straight. Yeah. And you come here where women are sometimes entirely covered. You don't even see their eyes. Correct. And they will come to you and speak to you with so much happiness. And even if you only speak a little bit of the language or none at all, the universal language is love. And you've never, ever, ever lack any of that feeling when you're yeah. here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Saudi has made us feel at home. And that's the difference. It's not just about the beauty. It's not just about a cool new place. Like we've traveled to so many countries, but this place really makes you feel like it's your home yeah. where I didn't even get that feeling where I'm from in the US. I never felt mm -hmm. like home like wow. it does here. Profound things you're saying. Damn. <laughs> goosebumps. Um, with all the differences, it's amazing because you, you hit on something really important. With all the differences that you have uh, against uh, somebody who's completely covered mm -hmm. up, and polar opposites, she yes. said. It worked, you know, like... Mm -hmm. um, they don't judge. They fully accept you. Yeah. Even us being fully uncovered, they completely don't even think about yeah. it. So yeah, you know, with, uh, with, 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 all your, with, all your, with all your differences, um, there's no judgment happening, which None. is refreshing. You it know? is. So just before we, uh, we wrap up or, or, or close, is there uh, any story, anything you want to you know, share with us before, uh, before we say goodbye? <laughs> Anything you want to put out there? I feel like there's something that you guys haven't mentioned. Uh, well, when we were camping in uh, at Elephant Rock in Aula. Ah, I knew it. I knew there was something. <laughs> <laughs> we camped there for three days, and uh, we every night there was like a community of people, different people every night, and we would always get invited to come to their campsite, uh, the locals' campsites. And uh, so this one particular night, it was actually our first night. Uh, this uh, local came by and said, hey, come to dinner. And um, so we went, and there was about four of us there. But by like 11, 12 o'clock, they ended up uh, welcoming everybody that came by. And there were like 30 people there. And so they brought in food and everything. And we were talking to them. We're like, do you know these people? Do you know? And they would say, no, no, no. We just welcome everybody. And it was just such a beautiful thing to see. They brought out more carpets and made the area really Fed big. Fed everybody. Fed everybody wow. there. It's like the United Nations. Okay. Yes. <laughs> really. Yeah. Such yeah. a beautiful thing. Yeah. Amazing. It was very nice. God, that's so touching. I would have one more story yeah. that I'll add. Just Hit us. <laughs> I mean, they're endless, but we'd be here for hours and days. <laughs> um, one story that really stood out to us was visiting Heil, as we mentioned earlier. And just as soon as we had arrived late in the night, we were super exhausted. We went to a restaurant to get some food. As we're sitting in a booth, a few booths down, a woman and her husband and little boy, the woman is fully covered besides her eyes. Um, they both sat like a few booths down. Um, as they were leaving, we kind of like, they looked at us, so we kind of said hello and waved to the boy. and. They continued on, and our waiter came by and said, your guys' meal has been covered, been paid for. Oh, wow. And a little bit, a few minutes later, the woman, who doesn't speak much English, said, welcome to Heil. She came over, and they were translating for us, and she just wanted to make us feel most welcome here. And we hadn't even spoke to her, not even one word hadn't mm -hmm. spoke to her, covered the meal with no questions asked, and then invited us to her family's restaurant for the following day. We went there. They were showing us with gifts, food. Uh, I mean, I can't. It, it was just God, the amazing. sweetest thing. We have that. never. We have no idea who yeah. this woman is. Yeah. And it's just the kindness of their heart. Just wanted to make us feel welcome. Amazing, amazing. There's a lot of love in in the hearts of these people, especially so especially love. even more so in the remote areas. Mm -hmm. You know, like Hai, they um, they 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 still they just love hosting. Mm -hmm. You know, and they want to make you feel comfortable. Um, and um, I, you know what I would love? I, I would love for people to watch this podcast, you know, um, and, and decide to come and explore Saudi. Mm -hmm. um, wow, look at these, you know, two ladies, you know, they're loving it. It's, uh, it's something that they're so passionate about and just, they have no intentions of being anywhere else. Let's go check the place out. So yes. I'm inspired by your story and I hope it inspires others to, uh, to come and rent a Wrangler. It doesn't have to be red. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and explore Saudi, you know, because um, we're serious about tourism, and um, the government is investing to put us, you know, in a position where we can attract millions mm -hmm. of tourists mm -hmm. per year. And we're just at the beginning stages, you know, the grassroots level. Um, I think the landscape will change in the next five years, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, with you know, c without Corona in the equation. But um, we are serious about tourism. I, I can't stress it enough, and um, and it's exciting. Uh, so yeah, so uh, absolute inspiration what you guys are doing. I absolutely love it um, And you know one day I hope I can come on a, a road trip with you guys <laughs> and um, You know, I'll, I'll get myself to sleep in a tent <laughs> I've never, I don't think I've ever done it 
but um, yeah. you guys have inspired me to, you know, just go out there, go out into the wild, and just find yourself. You know, you'll, you know, you'll have a story to, to tell. Yes. With all the exploration that you've done, and with all like, uh, uh, well, you being here for five years, I'm sure your Arabic has uh, has grown. You mm-hmm. can probably have a conversation now. Say you, your line. You, Ana Andres Arabi Shwe Shwe. <laughs> Thank you, Hin. An <laughs> cake. <laughs> <laughs> She's my Arabic teacher. I've taken two courses. Um, so, yeah, Amazing. I have a little bit of Arabic. Shwe Shwe. Walla, <laughs> walla, alhamdulillah, habibi, ana behebe. Oh, wow, look at that. Ana kill. She's got it down. Ana kill. Gamar wartha. That makes me think of that story when you're in Ajran. We, we were learning Arabic and we're very proud when we know Arabic. Yeah. And this story kills me. You have to tell them. <laughs> so we're in Ajran, we're at a four, and uh, one of the locals starts to talk to me. And so I start speaking to him in my little Arabic that I know. And, you know, I'm like doing my famous line, Ana Andres Arabi, Shwe Shwe, you know, and right. America, all this stuff. And he goes, no, no, no English, no English. I said, it's not English, it's Arabic. <laughs> I was like, You're so he proud of Arabic. <laughs> He wasn't catching on, huh? No, he didn't get my air beat. <laughs> so we're he, still practicing. It's still it's, in the works. It's still work in progress. Yeah. You're going to go back to him next year and blow him away. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gail. Thanks, Paris, so much. Um, promise me that next time, you know, you uh, back in Jeddah, you know, you, you visit and, and we get on another show. We get on another podcast. Mm-hmm. We'll do another episode. Um, and just keep doing what you're doing. You know, keep, you know, showing Saudi in, in the light that you're showing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I personally love watching your feet, and um, I just love what you guys do. I love what you stand for, mm-hmm. and how brave you were <laughs> for leaving that small town in Chicago, mm-hmm. um, outside of Chicago, mm-hmm. and coming to a place where you feared the most. Mm-hmm. That's what I take from this episode. I love it. It's inspiration. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Yeah, Paris, really you too. Honor. I hope uh, you know you managed to stay in Saudi as long as your mom wishes to stay. That's the goal. We're following <laughs> all the rules. <laughs> <laughs> we have our mask on, guys. <laughs> 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 Thanks, guys. Mm. Really appreciate it. And thanks for being part of the Mo Show. All right. Thank you. Catch you guys soon. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks so much. Thank you.